Hello, hello, it's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to my celebration spotlight video day three. We are counting down to the end of celebration. I can't believe it's almost September 30th. Today is Sunday, September 26th, and celebration ends on Thursday, September 30th. So there's just a couple more days left to get your favorites. Now, if you're not familiar with celebration, this is the uh, part two of celebration. Usually it's only in January and February, but this year we get it again in August and September. So during celebration, you can get a free gift for every $50 that you order before tax and shipping. So over the last few days and uh, until celebration ends on September 30th, I will be sharing projects using some of these celebration and gift offerings so that you can be inspired either to use the things that maybe you already have or to take advantage of this awesome promotion and get these favorites before they're gone. Now, I, before we get started, I just need to make sure you can see everything. You should be able to see the brochure open all the way across the screen. And if it's not, if it's only in the center, then I need to <laughs> need to restart the video. Oh, Nicole says she just received this stamp set. Oh my gosh. I I've had this now for three months and I haven't really used it a whole lot because I feel like kind of challenged by some of the images and I mean just like because they're so basic but now I'm getting really excited and making some fun cards and so I hope that you are inspired by the cards that I share today because this is a really fun stamp set especially for um, new stampers to create awesome backgrounds. So the um, the cards that I'm going to make today are clean and simple cards. Like I am just focusing on stamps, ink, and paper. So if you're brand new to stamping and card making, stamps, ink, and paper is all you need to make cards. So we're I'm going to share some project ideas. Hopefully you'll be inspired. I'm focusing today on the textures and frames stamp set, but I'm also going to use um, the Biggest Wish stamp set for some more I think that the big bold font on this goes really well with the textures and frames. Actually, for, for the second card, um, I pulled in a happy birthday from Artistically Inked. This is another really great stamp set for beginners because it's got a lot of great sentiments in it. So if you're trying to figure out where to get started, then Artistically Inked is a good one. The Biggest Wish is a good one. You can get them both and then some ink and some cardstock and then get your textures and frames for free. Let me jump right in and show you what we're going to make. First, I guess let me do a little little close up here on some of the project ideas they should actually this card has the um the circle stamp and then here we've got different colors of the uh, it's kind of like a, a paintbrush like sort of um technique and then these little trees that are cut and then this is kind of fun they took the stripes and did them one way and then the other to make sort of a checkerboard background I thought that was kind of clever with the bow ties there really great masculine card great color combination too pool party misty moonlight and just jade I'm loving that. Okay, well today I'm going to do some bright colors. Even though it is now fall, um, these bright colors remind me of summer and are just, I think, really great, happy, fun colors. So I'm going to make two different cards. I'm going to start first and do like a really, really simple card. And then we're going to do some layering for the second card. So for the first one, I'm going to use this single um, sort of brush stroke stamp set or stamp. And I'm going to use the three colors and alternate. So, um, um, and to avoid having to clean my stamp in between each and every one, I'm going to do my best to sort of um, space it out so that I can fit, fit them all the way across. Okay, so I'm going to alternate yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue. So I'm going to start by stamping off the stop. This is across the the top one third of the card. So a little higher than center. Um, Daffodil Delight is the yellow that I'm using right now. Now I'm going to have a green one there and then a blue one there. And so I think my next yellow one will be about there. Um, we'll see. Hopefully I guessed right. <laughs> and then always you want to um, clean your stamp in between colors. Now I'm strategically going from light to dark so that um, if there is any residual ink, which there shouldn't be, where did my damp and shammy go. Um, if there's any residual ink, then um, it won't transfer and affect the darker color. Here it is down here. Um, the stamp and chamois is a good way to clean your stamps. It's just sort of a, um, 
well, it's a chamois. <laughs> it's nice and thick, about a quarter inch thick. You get it wet and then you can keep it in an empty stamp case just to keep it um, wet. You do want to dry that out every so often so that it doesn't get funky. Um, switching here now to Granny Apple Green. I'm going to do the green on either, not on either side, but on the, I guess we're not, we're only going to have one blue on this one. I'll have to show you my other sample. I'm not sure how I spaced it out so differently because I did get two blues in the last one. Let's uh, give that a quick clean and switch over to Bermuda Bay, which is going to be right in the middle. Oh, come on. <laughs> a little s sanitizer will help to get that ink off. But the damage is done. I'm going to I'm gonna stamp the sentiment and show you the clean and simple card. And later on, I'm going to just take this and cut it. And I'll still use it on the card. Um, so to, <laughs> to finish off this one, I am going to clean off my stamp. And... Oh, that still has like a little, there we go. And then for the words, I'm going to use black and I'm using the thanks stamp from that biggest wish. So it's got black and it's got script. And, um, and then I'm going to stamp the thanks over here on the side. All right. <laughs> I see Jill said you can cover that up easy and absolutely you could but I want this card to be so clean and simple that I don't want to add anything to cover it up. Here's the finished card. I added it onto a piece of Bermuda Bay and see how I don't know how I got the spacing where I could add another um, Bermuda Bay um, swatch there. So this is so so clean and simple. I know you guys could dress this up so much, but I really wanted to keep today's cards clean and simple. Let me show you actually how you can use it for a background and then dress it up a little bit. So here's a card that I just made um, today and I stamped a background and then I did add some die cuts and some little enamel dots and some linen thread. So this is a couple different stamps from the textures and frames, but I just wanted to show you how you can dress it up and layer it out and really, um, really add add some things going on there. Okay. Um, oh, I see some of you said that it froze up, but it seems like everybody else is okay. If you're having experiences, if you're experiencing, uh, freezing, then I would recommend to, um, like exit out of Facebook and come back in. Usually that helps. And, and if there is a problem on my end, hopefully more of you will let me know that I'm freezing up anyway. So clean and simple, dress it up, step it up a little more. Which, which style are you? Are you more the clean and simple? Do you like to dress it up a little more? Leave a comment and let me know this or that, which style card do you prefer? clean and simple or stepped up. Uh, let's go on to our next card. I'm going to use the same colors and we're still using the same stamp set, the textures and frames. But for this one, I have, um, I'm going to do like a little stamp art. So this is, um, inspired by a card that I saw on Demonstrator Planning Place. I forgot to look and see um, who created it. I've seen a couple samples since, but there was one person I saw that, um, that, that I saw post it first and she turned in the lines and the splatter into candles. Isn't that clever? I really thought it was. So I'm gonna take, and again, I'm gonna alternate. I'm using the um, Granny Apple Green and Bermuda Bay, and I don't want the candles to be really tall, so I'm going to stamp them off the edge just a little bit. Oh, and I wanna leave some room. So we're gonna have our Bermuda Bay ones, and then we're gonna add Granny Apple Green again. I think we're just gonna get probably two of each one. So let's give this a quick clean in between ink colors and then we're going to stamp with blue bermuda bay i love these bright colors because they're really great for masculine cards um oh geez i did it again um <laughs> i have some um birthday cards i need for um i need to make one for my brother-in-law. I kept wanting to say nephew or uncle, but he, 
he's uncle to my children, but not to me. Um, my brother-in-law, I need to send him a, a belated birthday card now. Um, and so I think something, something simple and fun like this will work. And gosh, darn it. <laughs> that, that ink splatter. I'm going to get out my little sand eraser. Sometimes this helps to get rid of um, straight ink marks. And actually that did take care of quite a bit of that. So I think I might get away with this. Um, okay. So check it out. Candles. Isn't that really cool? I thought that it was, I thought it was fun in a, uh, an interesting way to use the stamps in this set. So I'm going to layer this one out. The other one was super clean and super simple, right? We just had the white, um, the white cardstock and stamping on it, but I'm going to layer this one onto a piece of Daffodil Delight. And um, so the white cardstock is four and a quarter by two and a half. And then the yellow cardstock is four and a quarter by three and a half. And I'm just going to do like a little tear. This is a great way to add texture to your card without having to have embossing folders or punches or anything crazy like this. So if you're brand new to stamping, adding a torn edge can be a way that you can dress up your card a little bit. I'm going to add this to the card front. This is just a half a sheet of Bermuda Bay cardstock. And I don't have it ready, though I guess I should. Um, I will add a piece for the inside so that you can see and write on it. So for the front, this is where I just wanted something little. So I took the happy birthday from Artistically Inked. Do you guys have this stamp set? Like I said, I do think it's really great for new stampers because it's got best wishes, thanks, happy birthday, hello. So it covers a lot of bases and has some really versatile, um, versatile images in there. So I'm going to do happy birthday on this piece of Granny Apple Green. And I just remembered I wanted to actually cut an angle. So I'm going to stamp that a little bit over to the right and then use, use my scissors and just cut a little angle like that. Okay, so this is going to go on with Stampin' Dimensionals. Another really great way to add some dimension to your card if you're new to stamping is some Stampin' Dimensionals. And so whether you're punching images or just using strips of cardstock like this, if you can Pop that up a little bit. That will help to give your card some depth and dimension. So happy birthday. Again, this is clean and simple. And then for the inside, I have a piece of white. And this one is the same size as the piece that we used for the front of the last card. It is four inches by five and a quarter. So kind of a standard like layer size to go on the inside or the front of your card. So for this, let's stamp some more of those candles on the inside. I'm just going to do like just one set of candles down there. I always like to stamp and customize the inside as well. So I'm going to, there we go. It's a little, a little long, but it works. And so this is going to go on the inside. Oh my gosh, I love this one. Which one do you like more? Thanks or happy birthday. They are both clean and simple, both using the same color combination, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, and Bermuda Bay, and they're both clean and simple. I have a few more card samples I wanna share with you using the Textures and Frames stamp set. Some of these are cards that I've made and some of them are swap cards, but um, I think it really shows the potential and different things that you can do with this stamp set. So here's one by Dina Rikau, and she used the circle stamp to create an ombre. I was really inspired by her card and the way she used that circle and I made this one with different shades of blue and did sort of like this Z fold card. So I've got Bermuda Bay, Coastal Cabana, and Pool Party. Simple, simple layering there. Um, I, I'm not a fan of this one. <laughs> I made it, <laughs> so I can say that. <laughs> uh, but I was trying to just do sort of a collage with the different shapes. And I, I think the... 
I've said this before, but I think what's throwing me off on this card is the splatter. It, it's not red. It's dark pink. I think it's Melon Mambo, but it still reminds me of like blood splatter. <laughs> so I can't get over that. I think that's why I don't care for the card. Here's one by Ann Clemmer. She used the lines to create sort of a, a border on the, the side. And I love that clean and simple look. Here's a great color combination, rich razzleberry and gray granite. Uh, here's one that I created another recent video. I combined the circle and the stripes, and then I added the little gift bag and the star from the Penguin Place stamp set to create ornaments. This is another clever idea that I found on Demonstrator Planning Place. I love having the Demonstrator Planning Place Facebook group. It's so, uh, it's such a great resource for ideas. So if you've been thinking about being a demonstrator and you're worried about like, how am I going to find ideas? We have resources. <laughs> we have lots of resources and demonstrators love to stamp and share. So uh, demonstrator planning place is definitely one of my favorite perks of being a demonstrator. All right, here's one from Sheila Hartman. She sent this in for the great big card swap. And so I pulled it out. I'll be sharing it on Tuesday when I share part two of the September showcase. But uh, it caught my eye because she used this stamp, that little brush stroke, and then she added die cut letters in each of those spaces. And so that's a fun way to use this stamp is to then um, die cut and put letters in it. So you can customize and use that for a name or for a word. I was thinking it would be fun to do like hello or something like that across the card. So such a great idea, Sheila. Thank you so much for sharing that. And make sure you tune in on Tuesday for more card ideas from the Great Big Card Swap Showcase. But that is it for today using textures and frames. I hope that you enjoyed all these project ideas and that they have inspired you to use your textures and frame stamp set. If you don't have this yet, you can get this stamp set for free with a $50 order when you shop during Celebration, which ends on Thursday, September 30th. So make sure you get to my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop and get Get your order in before the time runs out. Make sure to tune in again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Time. I'll have another celebration spotlight where I showcase a different product from the celebration brochure. Leave a comment. Let me know what you would like to see next, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.